But okay, yeah, perfect, amazing. So yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Um, it's great that all of you came this early. Um, I know yesterday there were some parties. So everyone who's here, uh, thank you so much. Super grateful for um, for your presence and for the interest in the talk. Um, so as you can see today, I'll be giving a talk on automation of Gnosis Safe modules. So I can give a bit of context um, of why I'm giving this talk in the first place. Um, so I'm not working for Safe or for Gnosis. I'm with a company called Dialectic. Uh, we are an asset manager based in Switzerland. Um, and we do a bunch of different investment strategies. Uh, so we have a VC fund, we have a liquid asset fund, and we have a yield farming fund. And for the yield farming fund, we have developed a bunch of automation tools that allow us to do what we call institutional grade yield farming. Um, so there's a QR code down there, the chronograph one, that's a blog post that we recently published, which goes over the risk framework and how we look at yield farming and all of the things that we need to do to do this at uh, like institutional grade. Um, and so we basically use uh, safe modules across the place. We, it's like the core of our infrastructure. And it took us a long time to kind of figure out how it works because the documentation on safe modules is not that great. It's like two paragraphs of text. Um, and so we had to go through all of the hassle of understanding how to set it up properly. Um, and so the goal of this talk was to give all of you kind of like a rundown and hopefully save you some time so that when you want to work with modules, you don't have to go through all of the hassle. Um, okay, so let's get started. Um, I'll give a brief introduction about what safe modules are in the first place. Um, so most of you are probably familiar with safe. Uh, safe is a multi-sig wallet. Um, and it allows you to have an N out of M uh, signer quorum. So every time you want to execute an action out of the safe, you need a certain amount of signers to approve the transaction. Now, this is great for security. It's not very great for agility um, because every time you want to execute something, you need all of the people to sign the transactions. Um, and with big DAOs, people in different time zones, that can take a while um, and it's just a bit complicated. So modules are like smart contracts that you can plug into the safe and circumvent the signing scheme. So the, once a module is approved, once a module is added to the safe, you don't require any more signatures to execute the logic in the module. So you kind of can bypass the signing scheme and have automation uh, through the logic of the module. So, and the logic of the module gets executed from within the safe. So the message sender in the external contract call will be the safe itself. Um, so basic diagram, you can have an EOA, which can be a hardware wallet, can be on a server, whatever you want. Uh, the EOA calls the module, the module calls the safe, the safe calls the smart contract, and that's how it works. So why would you use Gnosis safe modules? Um, most of the DAOs around these days use um, safe for treasury management um, because it's very secure, it's decentralized, you can have multiple people um, have eyes on whatever is happening. Um, but a lot of the DAOs end up having very repetitive transactions. So DAOs have to pay their contributor salaries. Some DAOs may do treasury management, they may do DCA, whatever. So when you have these kind of actions that are recurring and that you need to execute every month, every week, um, you don't want to go through the hassle of doing the signatures every time. And in this case, you could just write a module which automates this one very specific action. So whenever you, have, whenever you find yourself executing the same action over and over again out of the safe, that's when modules can come in very handy because you can just write the logic for that one specific action and then have it automated. Um, as you may have realized, um, putting literally a backdoor inside your Gnosis safe can be quite dangerous. Um, so there are some like security considerations that I just wanted to put out there. Um, so the important thing is that the module itself has access to all of the assets inside the Gnosis safe. Um, so whatever vulnerability you put into your module will affect everything that is on the safe, um, and that's very important. So things like reentrancy attacks um, need to be thought about carefully because if you have a reentrancy attack, that could drain your entire safe. Um, also, passing arbitrary function parameters to the modules can be a bit of a problem. Um, 
because you don't want anyone to put in receiver addresses, swap amounts, whatever, um, as that then, again, exposes all of the assets in the safe. Same thing with unlimited token approvals. Um, if you approve all of the tokens, then all of the tokens in the safe are approved, and you may have some issues with that. Uh, the good thing is that modules can be always replaced, so you can enable modules, you can disable modules. So if you have an application that you're thinking about, you're not sure what the scope is, you can write it with a very limited scope, and then you can just disable that module and enable another module, and that way update the, the logic. Um, so this is just overview of, of modules on a theoretical level. Um, I'll show you some code. Um, it's super straightforward. So this is the interface of the Gnosis safe contract. Uh, you can find this at the module manager.sol. Um, and this is the function that the module will call. So this function can be called only by a module that's enabled. It will verify that the message sender sending the call is an enabled module. And as you can see, you can pass it a two address. So that's the target of the contract that you want to call out of the safe. Um, it takes some amount of ETH in case you're doing a payable function. Um, it takes the call data that you are trying to call on the external contract, and it takes the operation. So operation can be either call or delegate call. Um, I don't really have time to go into delegate calls, but if you know what it is and if you need it, uh, modules support delegate calls as well. Um, so here, just very basic module um, as an example. So this module is only supposed to do one thing, and that's buying ETH with USDC. Um, and, and as I said before, we should always try to avoid having arbitrary function parameters. So all of the important contract addresses are hard-coded here. So the safe address is hard-coded, the Uniswap browser, USDC address, and so on. Um, the path for the swap is also hard-coded because, as I said, this module is supposed to do a very specific thing. Um, and then if we look at the function itself, it takes an amount in, it takes the slippage, um, adjusted amount out, and you can see you can add operators, like normal Solidity stuff, so in this case, this module can only be called by an operator. Um, and then, um, to actually do the call to Uniswap, uh, what we do is that we just encode uh, the function selector for the swap, we pass in the, the parameters. As you can see, the path and the receiver address are hard-coded, so the attack surface is pretty low. Um, and then we call that function that I showed before, exact transaction from module return data. It takes the Uniswap router um, as the target address, and we pop pass in the, the call data for the swap. So, um, as you can see, like this module does something very basic, um, even if the operator private key, even if the operator private key gets leaked, the only thing it can really do is to execute this one function with very specific logic. Um, and so to then like further reduce the attack surface, we can put in some more restrictions. Um, so in this case, the operator wouldn't be able to spend more than 100K. It wouldn't be able to do the purchase more frequently than every two weeks. Um, and so right now, this module does one thing. It buys ETH with USDC, it can do it once every two weeks, and it can spend more than, a, than 100K. Um, so the point of this is that we can automate very specific actions that you would otherwise have to execute manually, and especially when you need to do swaps out of a safe, it's kind of a hassle because you have timeline, you have slippage protection, so if the signers take five hours to sign the transaction, the transaction probably fails. Um, and so these are kind of like the use cases in which modules are, are super useful. Um, we have modules for swapping, for bridging, for all sorts of actions. Um, and then through like writing modifiers in, putting restrictions on who can call what, um, you can narrow down the, the scope of the module a lot. Um, and that gives you like very safe, um, where a very safe way to automate stuff out of the safe. Um, I'll give a brief note on, on the guards. So the guards are another feature by the safe. Um, and basically what they do is that it's similar to modules where you can write the logic in Solidity, and then the guard gets checked before and after um, every transaction is executed. So instead of doing all of these custom restrictions in the module itself, uh, you could have one abstract generalized guard, which gets checked every time. And so 
just adding it here. So you could add like a list of operators that are allowed. You could say um, you're only allowed to call this set of functions with these set of function selectors. Um, so guards and modules kind of go hand in hand and they are very strong together. Um, whoops, my memes disappeared, I'm sorry. Um, but basically the conclusion is that uh, the safe modules are super powerful, um, they're very versatile, they are a great balance between security and agility. Um, if you find yourself doing repeated tasks out of a safe, you may want to think about using modules to automate it. Um, and with, as with all other smart contracts, just security is very, very important. Um, yeah, so there's some more resources. Um, some of the QR codes disappeared apparently. So there were supposed to be the documentation for the module docs. Uh, you can find those if you Google for them. There's some source code. Also, you can add the modules directly from the safe UI. Um, so that's also not super intuitive, but they have a blog post for that. Um, yeah, so any any questions? I went through this a lot quicker than I expected, so we got some time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so as I said, we have like a, a stable income fund in which we do, do yield farming. Um, and so for that, there's like a set of actions that we repeatedly do, like swapping tokens, bridging tokens, um, and then there's like Aave and all of those big protocols that, that we use. Um, so that the security or like the custody setup that we have is that everything is held in Gnosis safes. Um, but then, in order to have the agility that you need as a fund doing yield farming, you need to like be able to move assets quickly across chains. If there's a new opportunity, you can't wait too long to get in. Um, and so we have like a whole suite of different um, of different modules that allow us to execute all of these actions out out of the safe. Now it, it, it comes with some extra friction in the sense that you have to develop a module for every action that you want to automate and every time you develop a module you need to like check security of the smart contracts and so on. Um, but if you have like the solidity resources in-house and if you have the people who know how to write secure smart contracts, uh, this is a, a, a great way to go, to go about things. Does the module need to be approved by Gnosis uh, itself or its permission? No, no, no. So the basically the security model of the module, and I maybe skipped this, um, but the security mod model of the module is that the signers of the safe approve the module. So you write the smart contract, you deploy the smart contract, um, and then you go on the Gnosis safe and enable the module as part of the safe. So the security model is that the signers should verify the logic in the module. If the signers think that the logic is correct, they can add it to the safe. So if you are a signer on a multisig, you need to pay very special attention when you enable module because you are literally adding a backdoor to your otherwise multisig wallet. Yep. Uh, the other question is, do you have to build the UI as well? Because, um, like I saw, for example, the different models, like uh, one inch or whatever, mm -hmm. you have to, there is a UI, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, it, it depends, I guess, on the use case that you have. Um, like in our case, we have like all of the backend system that do the automation, that hold the UAs, and then we don't really need a front end because we have like the the backend calling the modules. Um, but depending yeah, on the application that you're doing, you, you may need a, a front end. Any, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, uh, my question is more of a Gnosis safe uh, question. So while you were developing, did you encounter any, you know, any uh, tools that they have to help you store um, sensitive data? So for example, you know, during automation, let's say there's, um, uh, there's an external API I need to call, and I'm going to go through an Oracle, for example. So to get to that API, I'll need to pass in an API key, and um, uh, I'll need to keep that in somewhere, somewhere secure that isn't, too, isn't easily uh, retrievable by anyone else on-chain. 
So yep. did you encounter any, you know, any functionality like that with uh, SAFE? Yeah, um, not, not really because the, like, the way at least that we think about the modules is that you have like your backend logic that has, in our case, like the trading strategies. Um, and then the module is just doing the action that you would do from an EOA. But since we use Gnosis Safe, we don't have EOAs for security reasons. And so those specific actions get automated through the modules. So all of the like sensitive data stays on the backend, and then the backend calls the module and tells it, hey, execute a swap, hey, bridge the assets to optimism, whatever. So that all the sensitive data doesn't really touch the chain at all. It stays on the backend. Good. If there are no more questions, I'll give the next speaker some more time. <laughs>